Today we'll be installing the Garmin 93SV as well as the Yak Attack through hole wiring kit. Stay tuned. Hey there and welcome back to the channel. Today, I finally have an install video of some electronics on the kayak. Finally found a good deal on a Garmin unit that I just couldn't pass up. Uh, Bass Pro Shops was having a pretty much $400 off this unit. I've been wanting a fish finder on this kayak for quite a while. We went with the Garmin uh, 93SV. Comes up already preloaded with some Navionics cards in it, so. Uh, it's a 9-inch touchscreen, and uh, it's going to be perfect for this kayak, I think. Uh, it's a big learning curve. I've never never used a fish finder before, never installed one before. So I figured I'd go ahead and and uh, put a video together, for maybe for someone else who's never done it, and uh, we can do this together for the first time, you know? It shouldn't be too difficult. I've, I've done my research as well and watched a few YouTube videos here and there on some installs. Um, I think to start out with, I'm not going to drill any holes in my kayak for the wiring. I think we're going to get it out on the water, test it out, find out where I want it exactly on my kayak before drilling holes into it. So for this portion of it, it'll just be some basic install of the transducer, um, some wiring, and uh, putting it directly to a power source. And uh, we went ahead and uh, purchased the Dakota Lithium Power Box and we'll be using that to power up both the fish finder unit itself and my rear camera. And I, I like the Dakota Lithium Power Box just for the versatility of it. I can use it outside of just fishing. If we go camping, I can take it to charge up my cameras, charge up my cell phones. It's got a nice flashlight on it we can use while camping. So I went with that just to kind of have a dual use. I think it'll be good. Uh, obviously, like I said, I've never used one of these units before, so I don't know how much battery power that's going to draw from using both the back camera and the fish finder unit, but we'll see. We'll test it out. If, if we need to go to a bigger battery, we will, but I think for right now, I think that's going to work good. All right, so let's go ahead and get set up, and we'll just start this basic install of the unit. I also purchased a Yak Attack mount for the fish finder, so we'll get all that set up and just take you along, give you some basic install video of this unit. So, all right, let's get to it. Let's get this installed on the kayak and can't wait to get out on the water and actually use it. All right, so we just got the, the box here, the Garmin UHD 93SV. This does come with a transducer and it does come with some preloaded uh, Navionics map cards. So that's kind of nice. Like I said, it is 9-inch touchscreen, and uh, I think this unit is going to be awesome. So let's get this thing opened up. comes with a cover for the screen. Here's the unit itself. This will be nice. Go ahead and set that aside and make sure not to scratch that up. Here's the, the lower portion of the unit that the screen attaches to. And uh, we are going to have to attach this base to the Yak Attack mount that I got. I went with the rectangular fish finder mount by Yak Attack. Looks like the holes line up. Hopefully it's the correct one. Like I said, I've never installed one of these before, so this is going to be my first time doing this. 
looks like it's got the transducer cable and the transducer. Another thing I'm not sure about yet is exactly how I'm going to mount this thing up underneath the kayak for a couple reasons. One, when I take my kayak out on the trailer, I tend to use the spot where this transducer goes to overhang on my trailer. Kind of show some footage of what I mean right now. I don't know if the trailer will end up resting on this transducer once it's in place. It does come with a transducer mount already in the box. But from watching some other videos, I know some people have chose to go to an outside source, whether it be Navar Kayak or Yak Hobby, to get a mount that puts the transducer a little higher up in the, the hole that's underneath the boat. So we'll get it on the kayak this way. Like I said, I'm not going to do any cutting of any holes or anything like that until I actually get it out on the water and do a on the water test. Make sure it's going to be where I want it on my kayak. Right now, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go with the left side of the kayak, basically right here. So I don't want to drill any holes and get out on the water and come to find out I really want it over on the right side. So this is just kind of a learning process. Like I said, this is just going to be a basic install for right now. And uh, maybe once we go down the road and I find out exactly where I want it, find out if I want a through hole wiring kit here, if I want a through hole wiring kit here, we're just going to have to play it by ear, kind of see how it goes. But for right now, this is just to get on the water, get started using the unit, get comfortable with the unit, find out where I want it on the kayak. All right, you see we got the power cord here. And uh, like I said, I am going to be powering it up with this Dakota Lithium power box. And uh, yeah, like I said, this, this box is cool. It's got a little flashlight on it. It's got some USB ports where I can run my rear camera on it. It's even got a cigarette lighter here. Like I said, if I'm camping, maybe I can blow up an air mattress or something with it. I don't exactly know how powerful this box is, but I, I just like the versatility of it. That's why I went with this for right now. We'll see how it goes. See if I like it, but I, I think it's going to work good. I'm going to probably end up just putting this thing behind my seat with my tackle crate right here and find a way to kind of strap it down. So... All right, well, one of the first things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this bracket here off the kayak to get the transducer mounted on that. All right, so I already see why most people go ahead and purchase an aftermarket part from either Navarre or Yak Hobby. One, the hole pattern does not work you see i marked a spot where i'm probably going to end up just drilling a hole to temporarily use the bracket that came with the garmin uh, as you can see they don't line up here but temporarily i'm going to modify this one to use it just in the meantime like i said to get everything situated on the kayak how i want it so let's go ahead and do that all right so i ended up uh, just drilling a couple holes in the bracket here and uh, attaching them with some locking nuts on the back. And uh, I did end up flipping this bracket so it sits up just a little bit higher up into the, the space there for the transducer to go up just a little bit higher. It still sits a little too low for my liking, so we're just going to do this until we can get the part ordered uh, for the bracket that sits up even further up into the kayak, flush with the kayak. So, But for now, this will get us out on, onto the water. Got the transducer all wired up, put in here. All right, so kind of, kind of how I pictured. This is the reason why even flipping the bracket just creates a lot of issues. This transducer is not sitting flat, and uh, I can't, I can't get it to go flat because it's hitting that bracket right there. So I'll just use this just to test it out on the water and uh, I'll order the bracket from uh, Yak Hobby more than likely. All right, we got the transducer wire running up through the scupper hole there. Temporarily what we'll do is we'll probably just coil up all the cable, put it in the pocket here and uh, we'll plug this in here and then we're gonna 
end up running the battery back there. Sorry for the background noise. And again, we haven't got it out on the water yet, so I don't know where I want to run these cables. And uh, weather permitting tomorrow, we're actually going to get this out on the water. This is one thing that I'm not real sure about is this little, I think they call it a ferret, ferret something like that. It's supposed to help with uh, interference, but it doesn't fit on the cable very well. So I'm not real sure if this is even needed or maybe I just have it on here wrong. Maybe somebody can leave it down in the comment section below. Tell me what I did wrong. Again, this is my first ever fish finder unit, so. Just All right, quick update here. Uh, never have got a chance to get this out on the water to even test it out, but I knew that this bracket, the way it sits in here like this, wasn't going to be uh, the, the correct way. So I did purchase the bracket from a company called Yak Hobby. Got this online. Took a little while to get here. And uh, it's, a, it's just a 3D printed part that goes up underneath the kayak. So we're going to get this installed, get it on the kayak the correct way, and then hopefully we'll get out on the water and test it out this weekend. All right, so here's the, the finished install with the Yak Hobby mount. You can see it fits up in there nice and tight. Here's what it looks like. You see, still have, you still have quite a bit of space in between the bottom of the kayak sits up in there nice and snug and no chance of dragging so definitely glad i went with that option instead of the mount that came with the garmin so this was my biggest concern with the trailer i don't know if you can see that very well but i always rest this here on my trailer but I was concerned that it would rest on the transducer if I had this little skid plate pressed up against the trailer. But I can still see in there there's plenty of gap and it's still not going to hit the transducer. I think even if there's some bounce, I think it still will not hit. So that was one that was one major concern I had with with it being on the trailer, uh, just because I have to pull it up far enough to where it doesn't hang off the back so far. So that that's one concern with the transducer that I think is going to work. All right, so I've got the Yak Attack mount on it. This is the bolt pattern that I used. So just goes on here nice and easy. Locks down. We got the lock and load system. Can adjust. One other nice feature about this Garmin is you can take off the head unit without unplugging everything. That way, if you need to secure it in the cab of your truck or something without unplugging everything, you're able to do that. It just clips in here in the back just like that and you just pull down on this little tab and release the unit so that's another nice feature of the Garmin all right let's uh let's see if we can get some battery power hooked up to the, the yak attack power box uh, we're just gonna probably hardwire it into these for right now all right so we have it all hooked up here to the Dakota lithium uh, power box I got I got it all hooked up. It does come with its own inline fuse here. And uh, there is a additional brown and blue cable that are not needed if you're not running what's called a Nemia system, which I really honestly don't know what that is. But I'm not running that, so I just have the positive and negative hooked up to the power box. So let's give it a shot. Let's turn it on. We got power. It's not bad for somebody that's never done it before. Never messed with any kind of electronics. So I can't wait to get this out on the water, test it out, I'll figure out what the best system is. Um, I might end up going with the Navarre handle mount just to get the unit a little bit more back onto my left hand side. I like to land fish 
on the left side and I don't know if this unit being right here is gonna get in the way of that or not so it's all part of the learning process here so we'll get this thing set up and uh, get it out on the water we'll add in some footage of being out on the water for the first time one other thing I did while I was waiting for that bracket to come in the mail is I added this little quick connect for the fish finder to the battery box. That way I can just unplug it and plug it without having to worry about these little screw knobs here. So, All right, I think that little shower passed us, so let's go ahead and power on the unit. Alright, let's go ahead and check out the sonar. Let's do let's do the three-way. See what we've got. Hmm. So where is the water? Okay, so we got twelve sitting in 12 foot I'm not sure is this a mark here oh yeah looks like we got a little bit of activity underneath us let's uh curious to see what it's gonna look like when I get over here by all these big boulders This is this is what I want to. Comes on this color scheme, just default. And you can change it. Lava, Caribbean, quite a few. I think we're gonna go with amber. I want to go with amber on this one too. Sonar setup, color scheme, amber. So far I have to say it's very user friendly, very easy to to mess with. Look at that mark. A bait ball or something? Wow. Look at that. Well battery died and not even been out here two hours, so a little concerned with that. I don't know. I never did charge up the battery when I bought it. So maybe that's the issue. Hopefully that's the issue because if that battery box, that's all the runtime that I'm gonna be able to get out of the unit, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. All right, I'm finally got to the point where I think I'm ready to install the Yak Attack through hole kit. Uh, I've been testing it out for a couple, couple months now. Uh, I think I am going to go with it on the left side just because on the right side I usually keep my paddle here and the anchor stick. There's just too much stuff going on right here plus I got a rod holder here. I'd really like to have it a little further back maybe on the handle but I've noticed that if I need to paddle my kayak that would kind of be in the way. So I think we're just going to end up leaving it here. The only issue that I seem to have with it here is is netting the fish because I always net the fish on this side. But it's been manageable. So I think today I'm going to end up putting one of these Yak Attacks here and probably right in here somewhere and come out right here. So that's what we're doing today. We're getting it all um, marked up and ready to install. over the top of it here. All right, now we got the holes drilled. I'm just gonna feed this through the Yak Attack fitting and then feed all this cabling into the hole. Okay, now we just got this fitting. 
cut it at a 45 degree angle. We're gonna fit that in here around the around the cabling and into the back. Got the other piece over here. All right, so you can see this is what it looks like from the inside. We're gonna back up and put this sealant all around all the parts here front and back make sure this thing is watertight so let's get that done so we're just gonna put this all around every connection let's also go ahead let's also go ahead and hit these screws up with some sealant as well little stubby screwdriver works good for in here This is after it's installed here. A little concerned about it not being watertight, but we went ahead and kind of sealed up all the in inside as well. And then we just need to decide over here where we're going to put the next hole. All right, for this side, I took the netting off just to make it easier, but I think. I think we're gonna go right in this area with it. That way we can have the wires come up right up here, right into the fish finder here. Let's get this hole drilled. This one might be a little harder to get to the back side and get some sealing on the back side, but we'll see. This this area I'm not as concerned about taking on water as this area did, you know, cause like you take water over the bow and it's gonna drain down through here. If you're taking water over on this side, then we got bigger problems. <laughs> so we'll get this drilled, get it all set up just like this one. We did a little overkill on the ceiling around it. Like I said, I'm a little paranoid about that, but we'll see. I'm just using a one inch boring bit for this here. No matter how many times you do this, it's still nerve wracking. to keep all the shavings too that way if I ever have an issue maybe I can melt melt it down and put it into a gouge or something okay now I'm gonna feed this coat hanger through the hole here This is where I'm keeping my battery box currently. So for the time being, until I can figure out a, a different option, I'm just gonna run this cabling underneath the seat and then come out here. And then when we're out on the water, we'll probably just run it like this for now. Uh, I shouldn't have to worry about this being water sealed or anything. Still lock it down. I don't think it's gonna hurt those wires. So I think that's that's the option we're gonna go for right now. I like having my battery box inside my crate because it also runs my back GoPro. All right, just a little tip is to take off the little fitting on uh, the transducer cable because it's kind of tough to get both of those to fit through with that with fittings on both of them. It's just not enough room in the hole there to get both of them out. So I end up having to take that off and then re-feed uh, it back through there. So that was a struggle, but we got it on here. And now, now we got to put the Yak Attack piece back on here. All right, we got it installed. We got our cabling with enough left over to get to the fish finder here. So now we just got to seal it up and we're just going to run this just like that on days when we're out fishing i think that's completely fine uh, we don't have to worry about water getting into there underneath my seat so i'm happy with it eventually we'll either 
put a yak attack through hole in the back here or we'll end up putting the battery up front here see we got all our extra wires bundled up in there zip tied to the post so once we have the fish finder in place there gives us plenty of slack to plug it in and uh so far this is working i did go with the the hd mount the little stouter keep it still sways a little bit but it doesn't really bother me that much i mean you got a little bit of a bounce here or there but i mean you're on the water everything's gonna be moving so it's really not that big of a deal all right so final impressions on the garmin 93 sv after using it for almost a year uh, i'm thoroughly impressed by the unit i think it's a great unit for the price i uh, love the versatility of it and you can upgrade to the pan optics live scope if you want i'm not sure i'm ever going to get to that point but we'll see but that option is there um, it's a very user friendly uh, unit it's easy to navigate through um, there are a few things that i wish were a little easier to do um, one of the things being when you go to mark a fish i think it's a little cumbersome and going through all the all the steps just to change um, change the icon that you want. I wish when you hit mark, it like came up with like maybe you know five favorite items. That way you could change between like a brush pile and a fish icon. Um, I, it's just too many steps to just get to the icons. I wish it would just pop up with like you know five fre frequently used ones, but. And maybe maybe there is an option to do that. I just don't know how to do that. So if there is, leave it in the comment section down below. I'd love to learn how to do that. But I mean, other than that, it's it's a great unit. It's very easy to navigate, like I said, and it's very responsive to the touch screen. Uh, it's got great maps on it. Some of the other features that have come in handy for me uh, when I'm out on the when I'm out on the delta. Let me see if I can find it and go to navigate it does the tides which is nice that's that's come in handy out there on the delta it's also got moon phase sunrise moonrise it's got all that on there so that's kind of nice to have that info it's been a great unit uh, you can customize your combos here as well uh, i'm still trying to learn basically how to how to read all the contours and find the brush piles and rock points and stuff like that, but I'm getting better at it. Uh, I've been recently finding the fish and dropping my drop shot down on them and catching them here recently. So getting better at it. It's just a learning process. We'll get better as we go, but I would definitely recommend this unit if you're just getting started. Even if you're an advanced angler, I think it's a great unit. I think it's a nice step up from the smaller units. The nine inch touchscreen has been perfect for the kayak. Only downside that I do have with it being hardwired is I, I used to like to take the unit in and, and go over the maps before a tournament. But now that it's now that the power cord is attached to the kayak, I'm not able to do that anymore. Uh, maybe if, if I purchase a separate power cord, I can do that. But other than that, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And uh, if you have any tips, leave those down there as well. But appreciate you coming along for this video, and hopefully it was helpful. And if it was, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.